I just won silver place in this month's Hobbytown Mini Four Wheel Drive to Mia Open Class Races. Yes, with this crappy junkie car, I was able to defy all odds and beat other formidable opponents on my way to a silver class victory. Unfortunately, I didn't make gold this month, but oh well, that's how the ball bounces. The track was basically altered to allow for a certain style of car to win. So that type of car would be the speed car, the typical speed car. And this is not meant to be a total speed car. This is meant to be speed technical combo. So yeah, we've got a suspension car here. We've got this flapper system that I invented using basically body catcher material. Pretty cool, car catcher material that is. Yeah, pretty cool. And we've got my flex plate in the back. Yeah, and yeah, negative camber. Mm -mm. Doesn't happen here in this one because this is just the way the whole thing is designed. This, every part of this car was carefully thought out so that this will never happen. I'm not gonna say never, never, but it's likely never going to happen. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So yeah, look at this. This is like so crappy compared to some of the other cars out there. And you know what? Another another cool thing is this was fourth place in the finals. Yeah, this is a B-Max car that I just stuck a Hyper Dash engine in there. And yeah, it beat out 10 other open class cars, 10 other formidable open class cars with body dampeners, with tail dampeners. And this thing, with my special Palm Burger rollers, was able to outspeed them and stay on the track as well. Yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, I'm very proud of this as a fourth place victory. I would even say that this makes me more proud than this one here because I know that this car is a very, very good stable car. This car, however, I just needed to race it to prove that this was as fast as an open class car, and it is. So here's the funny thing about this. I saw a video on Netflix. It was a TV series where they pitted a 500 horsepower Mini Cooper, what's called a Super Cooper, against a 666 horsepower McLaren GT. Whoa, and guess what? The Mini Cooper beat it. This is my Mini Cooper. This is my Super Cooper, beating out all the McLarens. Yeah, so cool. So unfortunately in Bokstock, I wasn't able to succeed there. My cars weren't able to negotiate the track properly, so they all coursed out. So I had two entries there. I had a reverse roller VZ that coursed out and didn't fare so well. I had my Optimus mock frame, and that was doing fairly well, but would course out on the double dragging back, unfortunately. So, oh well, that's the way the ball bounces. And with my tune class entries, I had Eagle. Eagle was one where there was this point where it was always jumping over this hump and hitting the end of the hump, and it would just kind of like bounce off or stay there. It was like really strange. So the cool thing about the tune class races was every time I raced this car, I was able to make on-the-fly modifications so that it would get better and better and better and stay on the track, be more stable, be faster. So I eventually, what I did was I took this off. I took the, the tape off first, then I took the front plate off, and I had minimal braking on there. By minimal, I mean I peeled off the brake. I put tape over the carbon plate, and I was able to use that as sort of a mini brake. It, it broke as necessary, is what I would call it, or braked as necessary. So yeah, it was a pretty fast car. Um, it was beating a lot of people, and I got into the finals, but unfortunately, I coursed out in the finals. It wasn't meant to be. But you know what? I gained a lot of valuable experience by doing so. So I'm not, I'm not dissatisfied with it. It could have been better. I could have gotten into the top three had it stayed on the track. But no, <laughs> that's the way the ball bounces again. So my podium victory, silver place, gained me two items, two prizes. Yeah, I've got a motor case right here. Pretty cool. And I also have right here, this is something I've been eyeballing for so long, the block weight mass damper set. I have one of these, now I have a second one. And I saw a pretty neat video on a mock frame that uses this as its tail dampening system. So it was a B-Max car with this as its tail dampening system. So I might try to, to pick apart that video and basically add something like this to my mock frame or some mock frame that I'm going to build in the future. Pretty cool. So yeah, I see these prizes here as being more valuable than a kit. So yeah, y you know what? Anything that's a part is potentially more awesome than a kit because with a kit, it's like a kit is a very personal thing. You either love the kit or you don't really like it at all. And to get parts, you can always use parts. So I'm very happy about that victory. Right now, I think that all of the prizes that I win are basically tokens, right? That it's like, yeah, these are your parting gifts because you made it to this place. And really, it's more about the victory than anything else. And even if they had no prizes for the victories, I'd be cool with that because it's all about trying to compete against your fellow racers, trying to see if you can, you can best them in competitive matches. And it's all about having fun. So don't worry about winning races all the time. It's going to happen sooner or later. You're going to build 
the perfect car for a certain track. And if you keep racing your cars, you're going to find a track that you're going to be able to dominate on. It happens to everybody. Like, there could be people who could come in, have never raced before, and they'll win on their first try just because they have a car that's fitted for that particular track. It just happens that way. So yeah, just keep racing, keep having fun, keep meeting and socializing with your fellow racers because that's where it's all at. That's what Mini Four Wheel Drive is all about. Building up community, building up our network of friends so that we could continue to proliferate this hobby and make it into the big thing that it should be. Yeah, in the US, we're slowly gaining traction here on the East Coast for becoming a, a mecca of Mini Four Wheel Drive racers? Yeah, I couldn't believe it myself. Like, maybe a few years ago, this was not the case, right? Before the pandemic, there were some races here and there all along the East Coast, but then it kind of died down during the pandemic, and now there's a resurgence. Pretty cool. And it's all because of places like Hobbytown. It's all because of places like Deep Pit Stop in Maryland. It's all because of Philly Mini Four Wheel Drive Racing. That's me. So yeah, all of these different outfits, we are trying to grow this hobby as a true competitive sport on the East Coast, in the U.S., and hopefully for the World Championship. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to send some really strong racers out to Japan soon and compete in that Japan Cup. Yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, if you like this video, everybody, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you. Bye.